Hello there everybody and welcome back to my how to build an advanced 8-bit computer inside Minecraft. In the previous episode we bust all of these orange functions here, all these orange lines, into one place over here. All the way over here. And we did that because we need a way for the computer to have all of the instructions in one place so then the ROM can use them to um, to basically run the computer. Okay, so we've got them all here, and basically the only things which we actually bust were the um, like the addressing for the general purpose registers, and then they just got bust all the way down here. And the other thing which we bust was the ALU, and uh, this blue bus just links them up to there. Now, in the previous episode, you saw this contraption, this purple contraption here for the first time, but I didn't explain what it was, and that was because um, I couldn't really without doing this video. And I did say that I'll build this along with you, but looking at the size of it, uh, and it's just a load of bussing really, I really can't be bothered, so I'll provide you with a world download with all of this in it at the end of this um, end of this video. Now this video is going to be more of an explanation video than a building video because I have quite a lot of, I don't know, not advanced but could be seen as complex um, like topics to discuss in this video. Alright, so as I said in the previous video we are starting the ROM and basically this big white thing here is what the ROM will look like. Not exactly the same but I just built a little mock-up of it um, just to explain it. Okay, so first things first, you've got to imagine each line of ROM, so each like vertical line from my perspective here, is a line of ROM. So this is line 0, line 1, line 2, etc, etc. And each of these lines can have different code written on it, and you write code on it by placing torches at different um, places. So that is different to that. They will tell the computer to do different things. And I'd be wondering, you may be wondering, how on earth does this simple torches on a um, on the ROM get converted into an instruction that the computer will understand? So we've got to turn actual instructions here, written in binary, because torches represent ones and space represents zeros, into the functions that the computer will understand, and that is the job really of this contraption here the instruction decoder so what this does it takes your instruction and then it tells it to and it like uses that and tells the data or the instruction to go to various parts of the computer okay so let's have a look at the actual instructions All right so if you imagine this whole line here is one piece of code one line of code, one instruction. As you can see, it's split up into four different parts. We have this blue part, the yellow part, the red part, and the orange part. This first part is what is called the operation, and that is basically what this, uh, what the computer is actually going to do in this, um, in this instruction, in this clock cycle. Um, and all the other parts are just arguments or like added bits of data which the computer needs to carry out this operation. Okay, so say we have this on the operation, this first four bits here, this first four bits here. Um, if you took them as like a binary number, this would be 0, 0, 1, 0. Now if we come down here to something which I created quite a while ago, we can find this operation in the op code section. Zero, wait, what was it? Zero, zero, one, zero? Yeah. Okay, so this is zero, zero, one, zero. I found it here. And the function of this is XR. Now you may be wondering how on earth I know what all of these are, and that's just simply because the instruction goes straight to the ALU decoder. So whatever is put on this first four bits here simply goes to this ALU decoder. And I just wrote out all the instructions with their various opcodes in a nice line here. Okay, so we've got XR, where are we? Oh, right, here. And now we have our three arguments, which I just talked about a minute ago. Argument A, 
argument B and argument C. And then we have a use, so what this function actually does. Alright, so if you have a look here, this XOR will do A, so argument A equals B XOR C. One second, let me turn my uh, music down a little bit, it sounds a bit loud. Right, okay. And uh, that's pretty confusing, that doesn't make a right lot of sense at the moment. But if we break this down into uh, like little segments, it's actually not too hard to understand. So you need. So what is actually being XORed here? The B and the C. So if you think of this in terms of the actual ALU, B is going to be the first input into the ALU, and C is going to be the second input into the ALU, and obviously XOR is a function. And how do we get those inputs into the ALU? We read them from the GPRs. So B is going to be read 1, this here, and C is going to be read 2, here. With me so far? And obviously we need to save that somewhere, and where are we going to save it? Oh, we're going to save it in A. So A is going to be where it's written to, so this one up here. So it's not actually too hard to understand, so let's go through a little, uh, little mock-up. So we are X say we're XRing, right? So on the first input, sorry not the first input, the first argument, um, we say where the value of, um, like after the XOR has been computed, we say where that's going to be stored. So let's say we want that to be stored in register 5. So we put 5 on there, so we have 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay, ooh, right, pain to get out of here. Okay, and now we need to say the two places um, we want to read from to get the data to be XORed. Pardon me. Um, so let's do 1 and 3. So if you didn't know what this, um, this instruction would actually be, to someone else this would just look like a load of random torches on on a uh, on a line, but as you can see, with um, with that instruction set, that is actually what this whole thing is called. This is the instruction set. It's a list of everything which the computer can compute. Using that, we can actually um, we can figure out and decipher really what this is going to do. So what we're saying here is we're going to ail uh, we're going to XR. Whatever is stored in register 1 with whatever is stored in register 2, 3, sorry. So, XR everything that's stored in register 1 with whatever stored in register 3. I'm going to save that into register 4. Not too complex, really. So, now let's take a look at the actual decoder itself. As you can see, there are an awful lot of pistons which like vary where the information is going to go. By the moment, none of them are turned on. So if you have a look, like I said earlier, this um, the opcode simply goes to the ALU, so we can uh, forget about that one for the moment. Let's come down here and look at the right address. So I said that, um, sorry, the first argument. So I said this was going to be, um, going to like go to the right address of the GPRs. And as you can see, if we just follow this round, obviously it's not going to repeat at the moment. Follow along this wiggly bus. I joined it up to this top uh, decoder here, and that goes. Pardon me again. And that goes into the the right of the general purpose registers. And if we have a look at the other two arguments, um, so let's do. Is it the second one, that red one? If we have a look down here, the way I built this, by default, it's simply bust all the way down here, obviously with repeaters in the future, all the way along here, and it goes into down here, down here, down here, into this one here, the read one. And the same thing for the read two, I'm sure you believe me when I say that. So at the moment, there is basically this is not doing anything, it's just one long bus to the various um, various 
instruction inputs into the CPU. Uh, time date, or no, time day. <coughs> right then. Um, and that's pretty much um, pretty much the basics of it, really. Now, if you have a look down here, or no, and nand xr x no add sub the other version of sub and divide by two. They all have the same general use. The only thing that's changing each time is the function. So nothing really needs to be um, changed um, with the arguments. All they're going to do is just going to go to the same place in the CPU every time, and the only thing that's going to be changed is this um, this instruction here. So everything else would be the same, but maybe it could be that this time. I don't know, something like that, whatever that gives in the uh, ALU decoder. But if you um, if you saw just down here, we actually have some more functions. We have six more functions at the bottom. And now these are functions which cannot be carried out by the ALU. So the ALU does all the logic and arithmetic. But what happens when we um, when we want to do like data storage or data transfer and access RAM? That needs to be handled. Um, externally really to the ALU. Obviously it's still going to use the ALU, maybe a little bit, but it's not going to um, not going to rely on the ALU and it's going to have different arguments and that's where the rest of the decoder comes in. So let's take a look at this first uh, this first like additional function for, uh, for need of a better word. Right, so it's SW and that sounds um, pretty cryptic. That actually stands for star word word in this case um, simply meaning um, an 8-bit value. I think word usually in computing terms is actually a 4-byte value but I didn't want to like, write star 8-bit value, it seemed too long to write so I just put SW. Right and the opcode for this is 0101 if you're reading from right to left. So let's, uh, let's go and input that. So we have, wait if I place it there? Uh, what is it? Zero. Oh, no, no, no. Zero, one, zero. I think. If this had repeaters on it, I think nothing should be decoded. Wait, where's where's my input? Let's just add some repeaters. So hopefully nothing will be decoded by the ALU. Perfect. All of these are still on. Right then. So that's the opcode done. Now let's go and take a look at the various arguments. Where are we? Uh, there we go. So um, 0, 1, 0, 1. And if you look here, the A argument is still the same. But this time we have d a D argument spreading across the B and C arguments. So that's telling me that these two arguments are actually used together in one um, one like combined argument. <coughs> right, so this is a uh, pretty useless moment. Let's take a look at the uh, the use. Right, so this says RAM open brackets D close brackets equals A. Again, pretty cryptic. What this is actually doing is saying store whatever value is in register A, no, take whatever value is in register A and store that in the RAM address of D. So if D was, I don't know, 17 and A had, and um, the A instruction, no, the A argument was 3, it would take, uh, wait, what did I say for the D value? I don't know. It would take whatever value is in the third GPR and store that in RAM location, was it 18 or 17 that said? I'm not sure. And start that there. And um, so obviously we need the um, we need our arguments, our B and our C arguments, to be combined here to make the D argument. And then that is obviously going to get somewhere different. And now we do this by using these three or four because this is black room here. These four um, like, I don't know, inputs. Um, it puts here. So let's have a look. Let's, uh, <coughs> let's 
Let's turn on this red one, obviously it's not got any uh, repeaters on it, so I'll put this there to make it fit. Right, okay. So now, uh, that one's been turned on. All of the data from the B and the, oh, the instructions, sorry, that I used from uh, the B and the C are now not travelling down here like they did before. They've actually been transferred up to this one here. And now this one here will go to um, this bus here. Because this bus here is the address for the ramp. So um, all I'll have to do is to take this 8-bit bus here and then just bus it to here. Not to here. Okay, so that's the first one done. Really not too hard to learn this draft. Let's take a look at the next Right, so if that was star word, this is LW, so this is going to be load word. Obviously it's got a yeah, different pop code to the one above, but the argument is still the same. But instead of starring whatever uh, is in A and starring that in the RAM address of D, we're doing the opposite. So we're taking whatever's in the RAM address of D, and we are starring it in A. So you can look here, A equals RAM of D. And obviously the same thing is going to happen this time. This um, this address here will be bus to the RAM address. Except if you look over here, I can't remember if I explained this to you. We will be reading from RAM instead of writing, so this will be turned on. Simple enough, really. Okay, for left. I know this is going to get a bit tedious going through each one, but I think. Um, I think if I don't do this, you'll be uh, very confused, and the next one's really easy anyway. Right, so now we've got LI. That stands for load immediate. Immediate being an immediate value, and if you don't know what that is, that is just a um, just a number, really, just a uh, big old number. Um, so if you hadn't realised, as it stands, we have no way of actually inputting any data into the CPU. Now, in the future, we will have the binary coded decimal input and a binary input for those who can't do the BCD um, but we also want a way of inputting data via the ROM because it's very hard to time like if you're having to input data manually while this computer is running it's very hard to time when you actually need to install it uh, install it and input it so what we do is we use a way, we have a way of inputting just a standard 8-bit value into the computer via the ROM, and that is through an immediate value. Now if we go back down to our instruction set, um, load immediate. So we have A, again, pretty much everything uses A as either a write or a read address. And then we have E, and all it does is A equals E. And so if A was 3, it would say write whatever E is to register 3. And if it was 4, it would say write whatever E is to register 4, and so on and so on. Um,